Hello there, my name is Quentin Russell. I am the Content Marketing Specialist at Doc365, and today we're going to be going over how to add web parts in SharePoint Online, how to use them, how to move them around, how to delete them, and then we're also going to cover a couple out-of-the-box SharePoint Online web parts that we think could benefit different companies. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go into a SharePoint site that we have prepared for this occasion. Um, you know, this is a copy of the doc SharePoint, uh, of, of just the basic doc intranet site. Um, you know, real basic, it looks, uh, you know, if you were to say work with us to build out an internet portal or some other solution, uh, this would more accurately fit your colors, your branding, and it would be customized to fit your needs. However, um, you know, I'm done with the sales pitch and everything. So, um, to really show you how to use web parts, here's what we're going to do. First of all, we're going to click over here and I'm going to click new and I'm going to click new page. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. So, you know, if it's blank, um, it's created by Alex Wilbur. So create page. So first of all, um, this is a blank, fresh SharePoint page. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to name it. Um, I'm going to call it webinar demo page because I'm feeling just really clever. Um, so what I'm going to do, um, so this page hasn't been published yet. This is whenever you are building a new page within SharePoint, uh, this is what you're going to see. So I can add, move, edit, and delete web parts at my leisure. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hover my, web, my mouse right here. So what you're going to see is you're going to see a plus sign pop up. So what you do is you want to click on that. And what this will do is this will bring up a list of web parts that you can add to your page. Now at the top, you'll see a couple basic ones. After that, you'll be able to look through the whole list of available web parts that you can use. And if you know what you're looking for, you can search for a web part up here um, so that you can save time, you know, if you know what you're looking for. Now to add a web part, all you need to do is click on the one you want to use. Uh, for this one, I'm going to click highlighted content. Um, before I continue, I would like to ask everyone to mute themselves um, for, um, we'll, we will be having a question and answer session at the end. Now, um, basically after you click that, web part is put into place, voila, perfect. Um, off to the left, you can see a couple little icons. So right here, this is the, um, at the top is the edit icon. So what this allows you to do is it allows you to edit this particular web part. Um, now the thing is, is that this will only edit this web part. So if you have a copy of this web part later on in the page, it won't, um, the changes you make to this one won't affect that one. So, you know, say you want to use the same web part a couple of times on a page because you want to display different information. Um, you know, you don't have to worry about that. Now the icon under that is the move icon. This allows you to move the web part around on the page. So this allows you to say if you want to have a particular web part above another or under another. Um, and for those of you who are kind of filtering in late, do not worry about missing the first 10, 15 minutes of this. Um, I will be sending out a recording of this webinar after the fact. So um, after this, um, right below that one is the duplicate web part option. Real simple, just copies it right underneath it. And then finally, um, the icon underneath that is the delete icon because I'm, you know, you just need, sometimes you need to, do, you know, delete a web part. You've made a mistake or you want to get rid of it because you're making a big change on the page. Um, and if at any point you want to undo something you've just done, just click the undo button, brings it right back. Um, and also the other thing is, is that um, if you want to, um, there's also save as a draft, save as a template. So if you build out a page a specific way with a specific web parts configured in a certain manner, and then you want to carry that over to other pages on your SharePoint site, you can just save this as a template, good to go. Um, let's see, now that we've kind of gone over how to use web parts, how to set them up pretty basically, um, I'm going to start going over some of the web parts that I personally prefer to use and that we tend to use pretty often here at Doc. So one second, we're gonna start, we're gonna go through this kind of alphabetically. 
So the first one we're going to go through with is the um, real quick, what I would like to point out is that there are a couple web parts here that do not show up in out of the box SharePoint. Um, you know, because like right here, you see the custom doc employee directory, doc event detail. Uh, these are custom web parts that we have built for our for doc intranet and other doc products. Uh, if you want custom third party uh, web parts, um, you know, that's a whole different discussion. We'd be happy to have a one on one conversation with you about potentially getting that set up for you. Um, we'd love to do a quick demo, show you how a lot of that works. But back to the point, um, like I was saying, um, some of the ones that you're seeing right here aren't going to be showing up in out of the box SharePoint. So I'm only going to be covering what you'll be able to get in, in out of the box SharePoint um, to kind of belabor that point. So let's go to the document library. Um, real basic one, what this web part allows you to do is it allows you to display a document library um, that exists somewhere on your SharePoint site and you can customize it with your own title, um, the view and the size, which is, you know, how many files you are displaying at a time on the, um, in this view. So as you can see, um, if I go into edit, you can actually change like which document library you want to show. You want to show how many, um, items that um, that show up on there you can see you can set it up so that people can have access to the command bar or if you want to have it hidden you can also turn it on so that people can filter things based off of different um yeah you, know, you can also turn on dynamic filtering um and you know so essentially if you're if you're connected to another list or library that sort of thing um you know this is pretty good for if you're you know if you're trying to build out a project site or if you're trying to build out a employee directory site, or if you're trying to build an FAQ site to have all of this information right here that people can access right from the um, page itself. So moving on to the next one, we're gonna go with the file view. Oh, no, wrong one. Let's undo that. And then we're gonna go down to the file viewer. Let me pull that up. Oh, it's up at the top. So that's kind of one of the default ones. Um, like, you know, there's the, there's the default out of the box and then there's the default that Microsoft says you should probably be working with. So the first thing that'll happen is if you've not used um, the file viewer on a site in the past, um, it'll immediately ask you to upload a document as opposed to just having the web part be there. Um, so what the file viewer does is that it allows you to insert individual files directly onto the page. Um, these can be Excel files, Word files, PowerPoint, Visio, PDFs, and more. So let's kind of take a look at that. Um, go to stock images. Say you want to put a picture on the page. Insert. It should show up. Ah, it's not showing up. Okay. Um, say we go, you know, access something from the OneDrive. We'll go with attachments. Nothing here. Um, we'll go with, there we go, open that. And then immediately you can see right here, um, you know, files right there. People can scroll down, look through it. This is really good for if you want to have, say, a PDF, like um, going back to it, an employee HR page, where people can just um, scroll through the employee handbook, that sort of thing. Um, you know, just keeping the files directly on the page. Um, so moving on to the next one that we really like to use, uh, it's the hero. Um, so what this is, is this kind of really, this gives you that kind of modern, um, kind of SharePoint look to it because it allow, um, we really like it because it allows you to create visually interesting roadmaps for users. So let's say you want to select a link, um, go somewhere on, you want to send someone somewhere on your site. Um, so let's see, say I want to send them to the documents page, say I want to send them directly to global marketing management. So open that and then right there, um, immediately what happens is, is so if someone were to click on that, it would send them directly to that PDF. Um, if you want to, you can even make it so that an image comes up. Um, if you want to use, say, do, 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 change, um, use a stock image, come here, click on that. And immediately, you know, you go to, um, that's done. You go to, Click on that. If I um, I 
can't click on it right now, but if I were to publish this page and then click on that, it would send people to that PDF. So it really allows you to create a um, personality for the page and really define what it should be looking like and, and it can really help with your branding. Um, and this can be really good for getting employees engaged with your site. Um, and also, like I was saying, it provides that, that visually stimulating roadmap that tells people where they should go, what's important, and what they should be looking at on a particular SharePoint site. Um, so moving on to the highlighted content. So this dynamically displays content based on the content type, filter, or search string. Um, so this can show important files that people may want to pay attention to, um, as there really isn't any content on the site right now that we haven't configured it. Um, you know, it won't show anything for right now, but if there is, it would show that kind of highlighted content. Um, so this is really, again, you know, going back to why you would want to use the hero web part. This shows people what's important, what they should be looking for, and, you know, um, really lets them know where they should be directing their attention. Um, another one that you can use, doo -doo -doo, let's get that added, is the Microsoft Forms. So this, is, uh, this allows you to create interactive forms and quizzes that users can use. Um, so what this does is it lets you gather important information from your users to help them feel more engaged with what they're doing. Um, so for example, you can build a new form on the site. Um, say you wanna do, uh, you know, webinar. You create that, it'll take you to a different page. If it would load, it'll take you directly to Microsoft Forms where you can go in and what you can do is you know add new go through you can ask people to provide their first name organization job title you can ask them for any comments they may have um, basically it's a good way to you know measure engagement see what employees are doing see what they're feeling like you know gauge morale you can also add existing forms that are on there um, so if we were to just delete that Say you already um, you've already built a form within Microsoft Forms. I have not built one, so you um, you won't be seeing that. But you'd be able to go through. Um, you could either go to Microsoft Forms, or if you had a link to a specific form you were wanting to use, you could just insert that right there. It would also allow you to collect responses. You could even make it so that it shows people the form results once they've completed it. Um, however, that's really depending on what you're trying to do with that specific form. So moving on, um, the people web part, this is a really good one. We like using this. Um, we actually use a sort of modified version of this. But what this does is it allows you to, so say you want uh, people to know who's working on a project or you want people to get to be able to get to know each other. So you search the directory. Um, you know, say you want to get Alex Wilbur on here. So right now, what you see is you just see Alex Wilbur, marketing assistant. However, if you wanted to, because we're in the compact layout, if you wanted to do the descriptive layout, you can essentially do sort of social media profiles. So you can see who the person is, you know, their name, job title, you can provide a link to their LinkedIn profile, Facebook profiles, different social media profiles. And you can also add a description about the person. So you can have them ask questions about one another, write up about themselves. But either way, um, basically it's a good way for everyone to get to know each other, which is pretty important considering we're all working from home right now. And it's really hard to get that face-to-face -face interaction and really know what you're working for, um, what you're looking for. Um, so, you know, something to consider. Um, and the last one I'm really gonna talk about is the Power BI report. So let's get that down here. Um, because as you know, Office 365, uh, SharePoint is a part of Office 365. So you are able to connect um, SharePoint and Power BI. So what you can do is you can add reports that you're doing pages. So say you are building out a, a, a SharePoint page to be about a specific project. Well, what you can do is you can build interactive reports within Power BI and then track that information and show it directly on that page. Um, so, you know, say you have a report and everything, it should take you to Power BI. So you can either paste the report and then you can name it. Um, you can choose how it's displayed and everything. Uh, it's, it's pretty good. And like I was saying, these are just basic web parts. Um, you know, these are just the out of the box web parts that we recommend. Um, you know, 
we have other parts that y you've been seeing other parts as I've been scrolling down. Um, we recommend using those, but those are custom in-house web parts that you can really only get access to by partnering with us and using some of our SharePoint productivity solutions. Um, if you're interested in more, learning more about that, you should definitely reach out to us. Uh, we'd love to have a more in-depth conversation with you to show you some of our solutions. And that's everything you need to know about web parts in SharePoint Online. This has been Quentin Russell with Doc365. Thank you very much and have a great day. Thank you.